Here's how you can use SynthEyes to make your 3D camera tracking go so much faster than using Blender's built-in tracker. SynthEyes is now owned by Boris Effects, and there is a link for 15% off in the description below, so check it out. I'm gonna quickly walk through the process of tracking footage in SynthEyes and bringing that information into Blender so that you can do 3D set extensions like this. This obviously is not a modeling tutorial, just a tracking tutorial. So here I am in SynthEyes, uh, which is a Boris Effects piece of software now, which is great. Um, we are going to import shot, which I had converted to an image sequence. Open that up and it's going to ask about frame rate and stuff. Uh, go to 23976. Um, it is 4K and um, 360 frames. Hit OK. And here we go. Down here, it's going to start caching your footage. Um, to get started with SynthEyes, uh, which is one of the really nice things about it, is that uh, you start with just clicking auto and it does an initial kind of like setup of everything for you. So uh, let's get started there. The shot itself um, is pulling back in a kitchen. And what I'm going to do is add like a window and a wall here. So as the camera moves back, it like passes outside and we see the outside of a building. Um, and this is a cool like way to do a set extension in Blender. If like obviously a camera move through a window from the inside to the outside would be incredibly expensive, but you can actually film it all just inside and then uh, add a lot of that production value later. So to get started, uh, we're just gonna hit auto and let it uh, do an initial kind of setup. So here's our initial solve. Um, here are all the trackers that it put in, and then up here we can see our camera move from different angles. So it kind of pulls back, tilts up, uh, and kind of wobbles around there. So uh, the other thing to look at here is our error. So we want this error to be below one. Errors in pixels, so how many pixels off is the actual track from the footage. Uh, our goal would be zero for it to be a perfect track, um, but we're definitely going to have something there and we just want it to be as small as possible. My goal is usually 0.3, uh, but depending on what your needs are, um, anything under one is fine. Uh, and for this track, for example, because we're going to be building a wall and like pulling out from the wall, um, it doesn't have to be as accurate as let's say we wanted to place a 3D object in the scene on the counter. We want that um, to be extremely accurate. So um, we're going to do some refinement. But first, while we have a ton of tracker markers, um, you'll see that there are uh, a bunch of them with a blue cross. And that is what it is decided is the floor plane. And we don't actually have uh, much of the floor visible. And so what we would ideally do is choose three points on the floor and say, no, this is the floor plane. Uh, because we don't have that, um, I'm going to use this tabletop. Uh, and so first, I'm just going to select everything, coordinates on the floor, select it again, coordinates on the floor again to turn it all off. If there's a faster way, somebody please tell me because I cannot find any information on that. Um, but I'm going to take these three. Um, points that are on the tabletop and uh, say that this is, and let's do this one too, actually. And say that those are on the floor. So now we have a new floor plane here. Um, as we refine the tracks, we might even lose these points, um, but this will, set us up for success down the road. So anyway, now we need to get this error down. So to do that, we are going to choose refine from this dropdown, um, choose slow but sure. And then now we're gonna make some, you know, get rid of some of the trackers that have the most errors and then click go again to keep refining it down. But first, some things that we can do manually are to find any trackers in a reflection and just delete them. Here, this one is reflecting from the blinds, but that one looks like it's on top of the counter. There we go. Um, and now we're gonna go to 
track, cleanup trackers. The shortcut here is shift C. Um, we're gonna pull this up a few times. So just remember shift C is that shortcut. And we're gonna go down here to high error trackers. We want this error to be much, much lower. Um, so let's say something like four, we have 18 of them. Let's hit fix. They all disappeared, hit go. And here we are under one. So we are already in a good spot. If we hit shift C again. Um, we can see that now there are 21 trackers with an error of four. Um, that's because with the new refined track, it's looking at that data and going, oh, actually there is some more error here. So if we hit fix again, hit go, that's gonna drop again. So we're just gonna keep doing this until uh, we get somewhere closer to 0.3. And we can even drop this to three. Fix, hit go. Now we're at 0.4, we're getting real close. This last one should probably do it. Here we go, 0.36 is great. Um, here we can see uh, we're all in the green here with our track. So this is a pretty accurate track. And you can see uh, we only have one of the points left that was on our ground plane, um, but now we will uh, get everything lined up even better and uh, you'll see where that comes into play. So if we go into the 3D view, choose quad perspective and hit lock. That's gonna show our footage in there too. Um, we can see that our floor plane is like on the correct axis, but it is like a little off. It's kind of rotated and we want it to be, you know, the X, Y, and Z coordinates to line up as well as it can with this footage. So to do that, we can like rotate all of these elements. Um, you can choose anything and like, move it, rotate it, or scale it. But if you choose whole, it'll you can move everything in one go. So if we want this white line to line up with that counter. Uh, we can rotate here from this top view until that is the case. And right now it's looking like the floor plane is on top of the counter, which actually is is, you know, fine really. Um, because we're not actually using the floor, you know, itself. So, um, but if we wanted to like drop it lower, we, what we could do is find that one point, turn off hole, click here. We can move everything up. So that is on the floor here. Um, that is going to make the floor plane closer to the table. Overall, this track looks pretty good. Um, you can obviously see like the in the distance, uh, it's we really have nothing to reference if, whether or how accurate that is. Um, so we can actually add geometry into the scene to see how close our track is. So. Um, here, we're already set to box. If we hit uh, this little wand, um, we can click and drag and add an object to our scene. So what I wanna do is find a place in the shot where like the wall would be somewhere like here. Um, and then I'm just gonna draw a, a shape. And then let's move it a little bit this way, move it down so our camera kind of crosses over it. Um, we can also add, you know, another one above it. And then let's kind of move these over so like that the wall itself kind of is just past where that actual wall is. Um, get everything lined up. Let's add another also one here. And we're going to scale this one up. So this is just gonna give us some rough geometry. So um, let's see what this looks like as if we kind of came out of a window 
And then this is sort of the exterior of the building. That looks pretty good. So now um, let's take, uh, it looks like we have a great track. Um, this is all done in 12 minutes. Uh, this would take me a lot longer to get to this point in Blender. Um, now we can just import this into Blender and then start modeling and adding stuff to our scene from there. So the first thing we're going to do is export it out of SynthEyes. Um, there is a Blender Python option. Every time I've done that and try to run the Python code in Blender, I get uh, crashes and whatever. Um, but you can also export it as an Alembic file. We'll just save that. And then we're going to hop into Blender. So here we are in Blender. Let's delete everything. Um, and then we're going to import our Alembic, our .avc. I'm going to choose that and open it. And here we have our scene. So we have a camera move. And um, we have all of our points and that reference geometry is in here as well. So a couple things you will notice is that unlike using Blender's tracker, um, our tracking points are actual objects themselves. So one of the first things we want to do is let's select that hierarchy. M, new collection trackers. Put everything in here so that we can make sure it doesn't render in our scene. Um, the other thing is that the scene is gigantic. So if you hit create a new cube, that's kind of like our base size. Um, this scene is quite large. Um, we also have to go in and change our resolution 3840 by 2160. Um, and sometimes your camera will come in with just like this white in the background, um, which is this camera screen that is this giant thing way back there, um, if you just delete it, um, that solves a ton of problems with the scale of your scene. Um, but now let's uh, add our footage as a background image on this camera. So with our camera selected, choose background images, open, navigate to your footage, image sequence. Select everything. And now we see that we have our footage and also this 3D geometry. And then one thing you might need to do here is you might notice there's like a little bit of sliding um, on your tracker markers in your footage. And that is because Blender usually starts at frame one, but synthize and editing software and everything else starts at frame zero. Um, so you can see here that Alembic file opened up um, a project file starting at zero. So if you go into your camera um, over here in the constraints and time, if you offset by one frame, um, that is gonna lock right on to your, to your footage. So here is, here's the before where you can see that sliding where the track is close but something's off and here it is um, adjusted one frame um, i made these by just doing uh, an export um, as mpeg video change encoding to quicktime and then if you go to view uh, viewport render animation and you're over here in this viewport, it'll render out what's in this frame. So instead of doing like a full render, um, you can render stuff out with this stuff intact. And that's how I uh, did this real quickly, just so I can get real-time playback and also confirm that um, this all works. Now let's scale the scene down a little bit. We create an empty, let's scale it up pretty big. Let's grab our... Uh, Select everything, then make sure your empty is the last thing. Hit Control P. And then we can scale everything down to a normal size here. That's our cube size. Oops. 
Let's get our scene kind of more uh, at this scale. So that's how you can get your tracking data from Synthize into Blender. I found the process to be so much smoother than using Blender's camera tracker. I went ahead and did a quick little like mock-up of a model here, kind of doing a set extension as if we were pulling out of the kitchen to see the outside of the building. You could obviously spend all the time in the world to make this look good, uh, but this was just a tracking tutorial. So yeah, there's a link in the description below for 15% off if you're interested in Synthize. Uh, let me know if you find it helpful.